so I got a request from several of you that you want to see a Paul George build in NBA 2K21 next gen. And we're not going to waste any time here. We're going to start off off the rip with the ratings that would be in place if we were to make a Paul George build honestly a little bit better than what he is in the game currently right now at these ratings. And you see the potential badges that we have in place, right? So you see 18 shooting, which is a solid amount, 13 playmaking and 13 defensive, which that's not necessarily exciting number to see for somebody who's supposed to be a true two-way build and one of the most lethal two-way defenders in the league. So with that though, we're gonna make quite a few adjustments to this based on how 2K is played this year and how we could potentially maximize this build. So let's go ahead and get into it, my people. What's good, two-way fam? It's your boy Till here, and hey, man, it is that time we go ahead and try to make the best Paul George build that, honestly, I feel like is solid all the way around, but will also be beneficial to how 2K21 Next Gen plays and how you can maximize your badges to the best of its ability. So with this, we have this build at the power forward position right now. We're gonna go ahead and stick him at 6'7", and the reason I say this, right, is because at 6'8", you have to take such a punishment to your ball handle and lower the wings span all the way down to 6'8", where in 2K, Paul George actually has an 86 ball handle rating. So we want to go ahead and make sure we respect that to the best of its ability. That's going to mimic how he moves on the floor as much as we can, right? Drop it down to 6'7", but we're also going to go to the 7'1 wingspan now. So we have 6'7", 210, 7'1 wingspan. So we're going to go ahead and go with solid on this one because he's not necessarily cut up like that. He's going to have a driving layup, obviously, but he's also going to have a driving dunk. And we're gonna give you the best version of Paul George that we can give you to be fair. So we're gonna go all the way up to around 85 and we're gonna work this all the way through as much as we can. So now we have our finishing set, right? We have our driving dunk at 93. So you're unlocking every dunk animation. You also have a driving layup and a standing dunk with a good number of badges. So I think sitting at 10 potential badge point upgrades, you're gonna be sitting pretty with this build all the way around. We're gonna make sure we have an 83 mid range shot. And I know that's part of his game, but we also want to respect his ability to hit the free throw and be a clutch shooter. So right there, we have 15 potential badge points for shooting. Now, with this, guys, if you have that many badges, you could easily put on bronze ice in my veins or whatever. That way you can get that little bit of boost to your free throw. Obviously, you don't have to, but I feel like this build is going to be more for park players, not necessarily pro-am rec players. Outside of that, we're going to go ahead and get into the ball handle. And like I said, in this game, Paul George has an 86 ball control. His speed with ball in this game is actually like 79 rating. I'm not going to hold y'all like that, man. I'm going to go ahead and max this out because we all know how we want to play now something we can say about Paul George is that he's not necessarily the wildest playmaker in the world so we're gonna go ahead and put his pass accuracy at 58 which gives you 16 playmaking badges which for a lot of people you're gonna be a wing player you're not necessarily gonna be the point guard bringing up the ball but you're still capable of making those plays necessary so now you have a solid amount of playmaking badges so now we're into the defensive and rebounding category and something Paul George does have have is a 92 perimeter defense but this is the build that we want to make for ourselves right we're gonna go ahead and max this out off rip now something that is interesting about Paul George's build within NBA 2k is that he actually has a 70 interior defense now that is amazing but in order for us to get the ratings that we're really looking for and hold off on the badge output we're gonna go ahead and put this at 60 so with our block rating we're gonna go ahead and put this up to 74 that way we can get intimidator because one thing about Paul George is that he, although he's been on the receiving end of some crazy three-point shots he's also a good defender when it comes to closing out the majority of the time we're also gonna get our still up to a we're gonna get it to an 82 overall. So that gives us eight badge points so far. And then we're just gonna max out offensive defensive rebound. And I know that seems a little bit much, but as far as thinking of what Paul George is capable of on a high level, if we're talking about an MVP type Paul George, this is what I feel like his ability is gonna be. We're gonna max out speed, max out acceleration. We're also gonna get strength up to seven because he actually has a pretty high strength in this game. And he also has an 88 vertical. 
get our stamina up. Overall, we still have points available to spend, which is crazy, but this is where we're looking at. So being already a 94 overall, we're just gonna put this last attribute cap on free throw. It's not gonna make that great of a difference, but if you do choose to play with this build in the rec and pro-am, whatever the situation may be, you'll still be able to be somewhat of a consistent free throw guy if you can time your shots. And this here, guys, this is a Paul George build, in my opinion now, that is strong all the way around. It can defend inside, it's a strong perimeter defender, it has a respectable steal, it unlocks Intimidator, it also has a three-point shot, contact dunks, great layup. I mean, you can tell me if you would obviously make it better. I know some people will probably eliminate steal. Also with the 15 shooting badges, I don't think you need above that. You can honestly run a lot of those badges on silver with such a high three-point shot rating, but with that, guys, I think this is balanced across the board. I mean, you have 10 finishing, 15 shooting, 16 playmaking, and 20 defensive. And this is my best setup, I believe, for a Paul George build all the way around. So if I had to pick my view of what a Paul George build would be, I would probably go with Extreme Clamps first of all, because I have seen situations where he's made ball handler struggle on the ball. So with that, that's the first takeover I would go with. But the second, I will probably go with Pull Up Precision. There's been a lot of situations where in game, he's been off the dribble and then he pulls up on somebody rather it's from three point mid range and he's just become an absolute unstoppable force just off of just mid range bust. So with that guys, we'll go with pull up precision and then when you finish the build, you're gonna get scoring machine. Now, of course you got shades of Jason Tatum and honestly Tatum is a direct comparison to Paul George now as we speak. So with that, obviously I didn't get the Paul George connection there, but just to get the name scoring machine, I think this matches what Paul George is capable of. So with that, my people, if you made it to this point in the video, make sure to leave two way. Also subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications and like the video if you enjoyed this. I wanted to give you my best impression of what a Paul George build is like and hey definitely want to hear how you would use it or change it up in the comment section below but hey my people I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one hey, but I'm too to be preaching I just show out winning and it's looking like a blowout pile up my paper let it grow out if it ain't about no money I don't go out I'm too geeky to be